All right, so we are here today with Michelle Curtis from Building Blocks Child Care Center. Uh, Michelle, thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks um, for having me. So Michelle's gonna go over with us, there's some, some money from the CARES Act uh, that we wanna go over. But first, Michelle, can you just tell me about your business and how it started and how it's been going? Sure, okay. so Building Blocks Child Care Center is a child care center for children ages six weeks to pre-kindergarten age in Topsom. Uh, very much structured like a school. It is a center-based uh, program licensed for 125 students. Um, typical enrollment is anywhere between 90 and 100. Uh, cool. And then given the current COVID-19 situation, um, of course, we've seen some families unenroll due to employment situations. Um, and But we still have a decent amount of kids, about half as many attending um, each and every day. Um, primarily for our essential workers. Um, so we have been fortunate that we have remained open throughout the coronavirus pandemic. We've made significant modifications, limiting group sizes, parents aren't allowed in the building, they, they drop off in the entryway, we take temperatures, we wash hands right there, we do the same for staff members upon their entry as well. Um, we do not allow guests in the center at this time, for example, with our outside programs that we previously had, just to prevent the spread of germs. Um, hand washing and hard service sanitizing um, every hour, which is a lot, uh, but we're doing the best we can and we're managing and we've been so fortunate that we um, have not had any illness within the facility or for any of our families, which is wonderful. So we're still able to be open and provide care for those who need it. Well, that's great. I mean, one of the things I hear from businesses is just they need the child care so their parents can go to work and, and it's such a crucial thing. Um, so you uh, let me know that there's been some changes um, in the, or not changes in the CARES Act, but we've we got some money in May for child care. Um, can you explain that a little bit? Because I yes. think it's really good information for everyone. So we are so excited. Uh, at the end of last week, Governor Mills sent child care providers an email and uh, Maine is awarded $11 million from the CARES Act to be used particularly for child care across the state. So there's, there's a two part uh, sort of program to this. So the first is that centers will be receiving a one time stipend uh, for their licensed capacity um, that will help them to support payroll and ongoing overhead expenses, which is so critically important both to centers who are closed and those who are open because we've all experienced, you know, um, a, a lower enrollment and, you know, we're still trying to keep everybody employed and still pay bills and whatnot. So that will be extremely helpful in continuing our success and uh, making sure that we still exist after this pandemic is over um, because childcare is so critical. So that's the first component of that that's available for centers. The second is that the child care subsidy program um, is receiving a significant amount of money, uh, which is opened up for essential workers and uh, providing uh, the cost of care through the child care subsidy program. Historically, uh, this program has been an income-based program, and the new modification with the CARES Act funding is that that income restriction is eliminated from the child care subsidy. So that is huge for our parents. So if you are a family who has parents who are working outside of the home, and it does specifically say outside of the home at this time, mm -hmm. um, and are essential workers, then you can fill out the child care subsidy application and potentially be awarded um, the covered child care costs from now until approximately June 30th. The application is a little bit long. Your child care provider can certainly help you in filling that out, um, but it's, it's, it's federal money that's available and we want people to use this um, while they're continuing to work. That's great. Hey, Michelle, you froze up a little bit on our, our, our end, so I'm gonna ask you just in this next question, just to repeat a little bit. Um, it broke off right after you said, um, it's $175 per child per capacity. And then I got to your second part of your answer. Um, but just kind of as a recap for in case we didn't get it on the recording. Sure, sorry about that. Um, too many people on um, Wi-Fi in one yeah. household. No, 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 it's okay. 
Oh, stop so it. You're fine. You're fine. It's probably the stipend mind. money for um, child care centers is $175 um, per licensed capacity amount. Um, so what that means, and that, that's so important because centers need to continue whether they're open or closed. Um, those who are closed will receive a lesser amount of $75. The open centers um, will receive $175 per child. And this is as of one particular week in earlier April. Um, but it's so important for us to continue sustaining our payroll costs and our rent and mortgages, utilities, food, all of those normal expenses that are associated with child care. Um, and it is one time, but it's, it's a huge benefit yep. for child care centers. Perfect. Hey, so just so I'm clear on the application, is it the parents that fill it out or is it the child care center that fills that out? And is there anything else that parents need to know about this? Sure. So it's, it's parents that need to fill this out. Um, we can provide child care yeah. providers have access to this application. There's also a link online, which you can share, Corey, where parents can download the application to fill out as well. Um, it is going to ask a lot of personal information. It is going to still verify income, but that income restriction is lifted. So, so don't get worried over that. Um, there are usually some questions about your child care provider. We can answer those. Uh, for instance, you have to be enrolled in a program to accept subsidy. We can tell you our quality ratings, we can give you our license numbers, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and, and if a child care provider is not currently accepting subsidy, they very, very easily can to make sure that they're able to receive this funding for children of essential workers that they're caring for right now. So your child care provider is very familiar with these applications and we can help walk you through any of the details that may be confusing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like there's a little bit of work to do, but it sounds like in the end, it's going to be really worth it. Anything Very else we didn't cover that people should know or? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Anything else that we can add or, or is that, do we pretty much cover everything? Did I miss anything? Oh, I think that's mostly everything. It's just the funding is available. It's out there. We're so thankful to the state for providing uh, our child care facilities uh, the one-time stipend money. That's critical to our success as we move forward. And we really encourage our essential working families right now um, to apply for those funds. They're out there. They're available. And we're here to help you as providers to fill out those applications to make sure that um, you, can, you can get what you need. Michelle, that's perfect. Um, so I, yeah, we're gonna post this on our, our, our YouTube channel. We're gonna post this on our Facebook page. And we really encourage any parents, um, please share this with, with other parents that you know. Absolutely. You know, the other people that you work with, the essential workers, we wanna get this information out there um, as broadly as possible to help as many people as we can. So Michelle, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great day. Stay well. All right. All right. Um,